Jackal was released by Konami for the arcade in 1986 and ported two years later to the NES. It's an overhead shoot 'em up where you patrol a jeep through a war zone in an effort to rescue POWs. Throughout the game, you contend with enemy soldiers, tanks, choppers, and various other hazards. You have two attacks. The machine gun, which you fire by pressing B, is a nice rapid shot that fires up no matter what direction you're facing. The other attack is either grenades or a missile. You can upgrade by picking up officer POWs, and you fire these bad boys with the A button. These attacks aren't as rapid as the machine gun, you can only fire one at a time, but they're more powerful. Also, unlike the machine gun, these attacks will be fired in the direction the jeep is facing, so you can deal with enemies on multiple sides of you at once, which can happen quite often as there are a lot of instances of ambushes from multiple directions. The grenades are slow and don't have a lot of range, so you have to gauge your position when tossing them and be relatively accurate, but the missile travels all the way across the screen. It travels faster, so you can fire off the next one quicker, and it has two additional upgrades in itself that can obliterate a wider range of enemies in a given area. The one advantage the grenade has over the missile is you can throw them over obstacles. You can travel in eight directions, so you can also fire in eight directions, both of which are very useful for evading and attacking, especially with the large amount of enemies that frequent the later levels and the scattershot projectiles that you face. It also helps that you have such smooth and responsive controls. One thing that does suck is how sometimes you can't see enemies ahead of you. You can scroll to the sides as well as ahead of you, and sometimes you're positioned too close to the edge of the screen, particularly when you scroll horizontally, and enemies will suddenly appear, or even bullets will be right in your face without warning. So you have to carefully tiptoe through the tulips, or just know when shit is coming from experience. Other than that, I don't really have any complaints. The game is quite difficult in the latter half, and it gets particularly frustrating in the last stage, but unlike a shooter like Silver Surfer, which is mostly difficult by poor design, Jackal is a healthy kind of difficult that doesn't kill you in cheap fashion, with the exception of the enemies that suddenly appear, and even that isn't especially frequent. You die from one hit with anything, and you start with four lives, but the game is generous enough to give you infinite continues. One element to the game that's interesting is the POWs. By blowing up enemy buildings, you'll free up some of your buddies, who will come running out and load up the jeep. You have to watch out for enemies during this process, though. You're not invincible. Although, fortunately, the POWs won't die if they cross paths with hazards, so wipe everything out that's nearby first. At a later point in the stage, there'll be a helicopter waiting to pick them all up, which gives you bonus points. The officer POWs are the off-colored soldiers who will also provide you with weapon upgrades. When you die, the POWs in your jeep will spill out and you have to pick them all up again and you'll also lose all your weapon upgrades and drop back down to grenades. There's also a two-player mode, and this game is fun as shit in co-op. Enough said. Overall, it's a very solid game. It looks good, plays well, has a pretty cool soundtrack, gets very intense, and is very satisfying when you finish it. So the game starts off with a quick overview of the story, which I've already gone over, as well as a quick rundown of the four soldiers. Each one of them represents a life, although there's never any indication of who you're controlling during the game, and the cutscenes between levels are about as minimal as it gets, so it makes no difference. So you're dropped off by helicopter and the mission is on. You're faced with foot soldiers and stationary cannons at the beginning. The foot soldiers just mostly stand around and sometimes fire off slow moving shots at you. Shoot them down with ease, or run them over for a satisfying squash. The cannon's attacks are equally as slow, but more frequent. They're also slow at rotating, so it's not that hard to shift out of the line of fire and get an opening. Stay to the right side and blast the POW building to pick up an officer and a weapon upgrade. You'll then come to a door that's guarded. Take everyone out and blast through the door with your weapon. By the way, since there's no telling whether you'll have grenades or missiles at any point in the game, I'm just gonna refer to those as your weapon from now on and the machine gun will just be your gun. Anyway, once you're in, kill a few foot soldiers in the area and blow up all the buildings for a massive POW pickup, including a weapon upgrade from an officer. When you cross the bridge, destroy the boats along the way. It'll make things easier as there are some more enemies just north of here where they could reach you if you left them alive, giving you attacks from both sides. These brown tanks aren't that big for tanks, since they're roughly the same size as your jeep, if not smaller but they move around and can be a nuisance even though they're not that fast. There's another POW building here, and after making that pickup, you've got a shit chunk of cannons and a foot soldier or brown tank every now and then. Kill the shit that's on screen before shifting around too much and triggering more shit to appear. And stay to the right as there's a brown star in the corner, and that will wipe out all the enemies on screen. 
Soon after is the helipad where you can drop off the POWs, and right after that is the boss. Four brown tanks. Although they start off as the color blue, and then change to brown after a shot of your weapon. Then they die after the second shot. They enter the fray one at a time, so pick them off one by one, using a hit and run technique if you have grenades, or just keep your distance and blast them if you have missiles. Just do it quick so you don't get two tanks on the screen at once. Their strength is definitely in numbers. After you take them out, you'll get a cutscene of the four soldiers plotting their next move, even if any of them have been killed. Early on in stage two, you've got a couple cannons and foot soldiers, and an officer POW building right off the bat for a weapon upgrade. Soon after that is a small compound guarded by a few foot soldiers. Pull the door open, kill everyone inside, and blow up the three POW buildings for some pickups and a weapon upgrade. When you come out, you'll meet the first gray tank of the game. It's a bit faster than the brown tank and takes a few more hits, but the patterns aren't any different. Then head left, kill everyone in sight, and blast this building for another officer and upgrade. Then you'll reach a fork in the road. The paths cross shortly thereafter, but here are your options. Heading right, you'll encounter a brown tank, as well as a brown plane that flies by and drops bombs. You can take it out with your weapon, but they are fast and you might miss them. Just avoid them if you can't kill them. If you go left, you'll still end up running into the brown tank, but you won't have to worry about the plane. Plus, there's a flashing star at the bottom when you first take the turn, which gives you a complete maximum weapon upgrade to your missiles, so I recommend this route. After that, you've got some foot soldiers guarding a POW building with a weapon upgrade, and four cannons guarding the helipad. Blast them all before dropping off the prisoners, and keep an eye out for the plane that'll fly by. If you have to withdraw for a bit, it's no big deal. Then you'll get a couple gray jeeps. They're basically smaller tanks that toss explosives at you. Take them out and watch for the rolling pillars that'll get blown off the ground. Another plane will soar across the sky before you reach the home stretch, a short bridge with a lot of firepower. You've got these ridiculous statues, two on each side that spit missiles at you. Watch for their mouths to open and dodge them. They'll attack at the same time, and fire your weapon into them. Meanwhile, you've got foot soldiers, a gray jeep, and a pair of brown planes coming down the bridge just to make things more fun. Kill the statues as quickly as possible so you don't have to dodge multiple attacks from all angles. Right before the boss is a couple cannons. Blast them and head right and down for an extra life, which is this green star. The boss is four of those statues lined up side by side. They spit heat-seeking missiles, which you can blast out of your way, but they can get overwhelming if there's a lot of them at once, as a simple shift won't get them entirely out of your way, they'll follow you. So if this happens, move your ass around, shifting them off course until the coast is clear and go back to firing at the statue. You'll have to use your weapon to do any damage. Brown tanks will show up just to throw a monkey wrench into your plans. The best strategy is to rush up, fire off one shot at a statue, retreat and shift back and forth, blasting the oncoming missiles to prevent an avalanche of these things from showing up, and wipe out the tanks in the process. After taking out each statue, it's on to stage 3. Kill the foot soldier at the beginning and bust down the gate. You've got more foot soldiers and a couple brown tanks right away. There are a few cannons just ahead, and over here there'll be a destroyer sending firepower your way. Send your weapon into it. A little while later, you'll find the first POW buildings of the level over here to the right. Shoot down the cannons just ahead of it before you pick them all up. Just after that, you've got two narrow paths you can take. Either way, you're going to have to deal with the same enemies on both sides. You've got submarines that surface and fire a quick missile your way. Watch for the shadow on the water so you can see it coming and wipe them out with your weapon before they can attack you. Then you've also got more destroyers, a brown tank and some foot soldiers sprinkled about. After that, there's another pair of POW buildings. Take out the cannon, brown tanks, and foot soldiers before picking them up. Blast the jeep just south of the building on the right side to get a flashing star that's hidden underneath. After that is a series of lasers that block your path. Watch their timing, there's not a whole lot of breathing room, so move quickly and stop between each. Right after, you've got a pair of cannons, a brown tank, and several foot soldiers guarding the helipad. Drop off your buddies after clearing them all out. Blast through the gate, and then you've got four freaking cannons at once. It can be tricky to dodge all of them at once, so another option is to sneak around the perimeter and make your way right, so only two are on screen at once, basically causing the other two to not exist momentarily. Also, if you shoot the area just south of the cannons on the right, you'll get a brown star and wipe out all the enemies on screen, so that's another option if you'd rather take them head on. Blow up the next gate, and you've got two cannons that fire spread shot at you. Send your weapon their way before they can get their attack off. Soon after is the boss fight, a series of these spread shot cannons mounted on a ship. They'll pop out and blink before firing, so stay as far off to the side as you possibly can. The cannons on the far side of you will have less of a chance of hitting you, 
and you'll have a better spot for clearing out the brown tanks that pop out from underneath. Move in and attack just after they pop up and retreat as they fire. You'll have more distance to not only anticipate the attack, but to also let the spread shot spread out, making it easier to dodge. Focus on one cannon at a time and keep the brown tanks at bay. There are six cannons, so once you take them all out, it's on to the next stage. The fourth stage starts out with some foot soldiers and brown tanks and a swampy muck. Travel along the narrow areas between the water, as trudging through this shit will slow you down and compromise you greatly if there are enemies abound. Watch out for these missile launchers that fire at you from the water. The missiles are heat seeking and will continue to fire infinitely as long as they're on the screen. So shoot down the missiles that do get in your way and blast the ripple area in the water to put a stop to the rest of them. Soon after there's a fork in the road. Going up the left side you'll have to deal with foot soldiers, falling boulders, brown tanks and the dreaded artillery truck that fires a spread of projectiles at you. They're pretty frequent and a bitchy pattern to avoid. So blow his ass out of the water with your weapon right away. There's a POW with a weapon upgrade in the building beside it though. On the right side of the fork you've just got boulders and some landmines, which are small and they'll appear only when you're in the vicinity of them. So keep an eye at where you're going and there'll also be a POW weapon upgrade officer in a building at the end of the fork, so I recommend this path. And if you want or need two upgrades, then you can always slide across to the other side no matter which path you take. The compound is optional but recommended. You can go around the perimeter, but there's only a couple cannons and a foot soldier in here guarding three POW buildings, which includes an officer for a weapon upgrade. Blast out of the compound, kill the brown tank, and there's another POW officer in this building. You should be good and loaded at this point unless you just recently died. Continue north and there'll be some foot soldiers, brown tanks, landmines, and one of those cocksucker missile launchers mounted on the cliff in the center. Destroy it. Along the way a train will come whizzing by with guns blazing, so get off the tracks and blow it sky high before it can do so. It's an artillery truck just ahead too. It's tricky to get in the right position, but sneak up and fire your weapon to take them out, treating to dodge its attacks if necessary. Just ahead is the helipad. Take out the brown tanks and cannons nearby before dropping the POWs off. Soon after is the boss, a chopper that sends paratroopers at you and fires off spread shots while it's on screen. Keep your distance to dodge its attacks and fire your weapon at it. Then take out the foot soldiers when it retreats. Keep this up until you blow it to hell and stage 5 awaits. There's a POW officer in the building right at the beginning, so grab your upgrade. The only obstacle is a brown tank that's nearby. Cross the stone bridge and take out the gate, along with the guarding foot soldiers and gray tank. Inside the compound, you've got a brown tank, a cannon, and a shitload of POWs to pick up. There are two exits. Take the one on the left, as the other one leads to two cannons, landmines, and some foot soldiers. You'll only have to deal with foot soldiers on this side. And don't bother blowing the POW building up. There's a gray tank in there, no POWs. After blasting through the next gate, you have three bridge options, all of which lead to the same place. It's just the paths have different enemies throughout. The left bridge has landmines, foot soldiers, bomber planes, and a cannon mounted on the edge of the cliff. The center bridge has a foot soldier, brown tank, bomber planes, and two cannons mounted at the end. But it does have a hidden extra life if you shoot this area here. The right bridge has a gray tank, bomber planes, and a foot soldier. No cannon at the end. The right bridge is the easiest, but I prefer the middle bridge for the extra life. Go big or go home. But it's up to you. After you cross, blow up the POW building on the right and free the officer for an upgrade. The cannons up ahead are protected by bunkers. Lob grenades over them or angle yourself from a distance and blast them with your missiles. Inside the compound up ahead you've got a gray tank and a light brown tank. This thing fires steady streams of fire at you. Use your weapon to wipe it out, as it takes a decent amount of machine gun fire to kill it. Pick up the POWs in the two buildings, and right after you leave the compound on the left, there's another POW building. This one an officer. On the bridge, you've got a couple brown tanks, and then a pair of mounted cannons at the end. Just be careful of your approach. You don't want to walk right into the line of fire. After crossing the bridge, you've got a freaking barrage of four cannons behind bunkers, and several foot soldiers. Two up front armed with flamethrowers, so there's quite a bit of firepower coming at you. Heave grenades if you got them, otherwise weave your way between the bullets, and take your shots when you can. Blow up this building on the left to free up an officer POW, and then back to the center behind all the bullshit you just fought is a helipad to drop off your POWs. 
while doing this, these freaking annoying bomber planes will come whizzing by, dropping explosives. So be ready to pull out immediately and blast them, or just avoid them until you drop everybody off. The boss is just ahead, a wall with five mounted guns, as well as four garages that deploy gray and brown tanks. First, work your way from one side of the wall to the other, blasting away all the guns with your weapon, taking out any tanks that might get in your way in the process. Once that's complete, you have to destroy the garages or the tanks that will just keep coming. Use your weapon and time the attack so it makes contact just as the door opens up and the light flashes. After taking out all four, the electrical current at the gate will shut down. Blast it and move in for the final stage. Kill the tanks and soldiers from behind the barricade, then head left to go around it and take out the guns mounted along the wall. Kill the tanks and blow up these two buildings for some POWs. Blow up the gate and watch out for the bomber that flies by. There are two POW buildings on each side of the screen. Rescue them all and fire at the mounted guns in the center. Head up the conveyor belt. Just don't lose control and let the foot soldiers shoot you down. Blow up the gate and kill the mounted guns, tanks, and jeeps that frequent the area. And as you head to the helipad to drop off your many POWs, be wary of this chopper that flies in fast and fires many bullets in multiple directions. It's a fucking nuisance if there ever was one. So try to kill it immediately after it shows up, or you'll have to play cat and mouse with it. After blasting through the next gate, you've got a couple brown tanks and a spread shot cannon in the ground. Blow it up when it first pops out so you don't have to dodge the bullets. After passing the next gate, a chopper will follow you when you pass by this area. Turn around and blast him immediately so you're not dodging bullets in circles. Then you've got a shitload of tanks and mounted guns along this narrow area. Fire everything down quick before they attack and grab the flashing star. After blowing up the next gate, you'll hit the home stretch which is guarded by two of these heat seeking missile launchers from the ground. There are also mounted guns on both sides as well as up ahead, but the missiles will continue to chase you, so you absolutely must destroy the launchers at the source if you want to get by. The final stretch is a narrow corridor with mounted guns on each side and you have to head up a conveyor belt pushing you back, so control isn't your friend here. You'll have to maneuver between the bullets and get the right angle to shoot them down with your weapon. It's almost impossible to get past this shit without destroying them, so don't even bother trying to hoof it. The final gate is guarded by a couple foot soldiers and a brown tank, but the real hellhound of this area is the chopper that sneaks up from behind. Because it's a narrow space, it's not easy to get away from its attack, so you're going to want to time your turnaround and take it out right away, minimalizing the amount of firepower it sends your way. After taking out the gate, it's on to the final boss. The base is guarded by a pair of laser guns that fire in three directions alternately. You've also got brown tanks to contend with, and one of those annoying freaking choppers. Take the chopper out first and foremost, they won't respawn the way the tanks do, but they're much more of a threat anyway. Dodge the lasers, and when you have an opening, fire your weapon at the lasers. Once they're gone, fire at the base and the center until it blows up. Now you've got a huge fucking tank to deal with, and this is the final boss for real. It moves back and forth, firing rapid shots of bullets from the mounted gun in several directions, as well as a long stream of fire every few seconds from the turret. Needless to say, you need to avoid all this shit. Try to keep yourself moving more or less along the line of the tank, making sure you're not directly in the way of the turret. You don't want to get covered in flame. Then just try to stay in the gaps between the bullets. It's easier said than done, especially since the tank takes a shitload of hits to destroy it. It'll start turning red when it gets closer to dying, and if you're skilled and patient enough, you'll eventually take it out and you've beaten the game. You get a short cutscene with the soldiers chilling by the water and the credits roll. So this concludes Jackal, a fun and relatively deep shooter. It's aged really well too, so if this one slipped under the radar, then I highly recommend it. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.